What's up guys? Today I'm going to show you how to build a monitor screen riser for less than $20. I do realize not everyone has the most fanciest tools in the world. In fact, the tools I'm going to use for this are very basic and hopefully you guys already have. Now for the building supplies I, ha I got for this, for this build, I got all at a local hardware store. Uh, Johnson Lumber Ace Hardware if you are from the Morgan Hill area. And if you do go over there, show my brothers and sisters some love because they're really trying to help us out in a time like this and it's putting a lot of stress on them. And if you do go for your own safety and for theirs, it is common courtesy to put on a dust mask or N95 mask that I have right here. And four, if you guys, like I said, don't have the, uh, the tools, they do cut lumber to exact measurements. So I already have all my lumber cut to the measurements that I need for this build. And most likely all Home Depots and Ace Hardware's wherever you are throughout the country should do the same thing. So if, uh, I'm going to give you the uh, cut, me uh, cut measurements in a second and then you can just copy and paste those and bring them over there. Now that we've gotten over that, I'm going to get into the exact tools that you're going to need for this project and the exact products that you need to build this screen riser. Alright, these are all the tools that you're going to need to assemble this build. If you don't have an impact, that's fine. You actually don't need this guy. All you need is the number two Phillips uh, bit because you're going to need that to drill uh, to drive the screws. You can get away with just using this uh, drill driver corded or cordless like the one I have here. It is going to be a little bit more difficult, but it's something you can manage. But since I do have the impact, I am going to use it. What else you're going to need is a uh, assortment of drill bits. Uh, we're only going to use about two, but mostly they just come in these uh, variety packs. If, just, if you have one already, that's great. If you don't, I would recommend picking up a DeWalt one. Don't go for anything cheaper than DeWalt because they're most likely going to strip after this and then... You don't have anything else. Uh, just standard tape measure. You can get the cheap tape measure if you don't have a don't know how to read uh, measurements like sixteenths and eighths. And you're gonna need at least just one piece of sandpaper, which runs for about a dollar ninety nine if you don't have one already. All right, so I got everything right here in order to build the monitor riser. This is ready pre-cut cedar wood. I'll give you the dimensions in a second. Um, this is the cheapest cabinet screws I could find at Ace Hardware. I think this whole packet was under $4, or it was $5.99 or $4.99. The length is 1 and 5 eighths long, so that is going to be the exact length that I'm going to use. I got the smallest amount of wood glue I could find. It's just a generic wood glue tied bond. It was a couple dollars. And also I have a bag full of sawdust that I went behind the, I went behind the saw and got for free. So this wood glue is going to serve two purposes. One, it is going to help strengthen the build. So I'm going to do that in junction with the cabinet screws just to make it more sturdier. I mean, I'm not going to move it or anything, but you know, better safe than sorry. And this also uh, replaces the need for buying a, um, buying wood putty. So I am countersinking the screws. So usually what you do is you put a, do a, a little dap of a, uh, wood putty on top of the screws and then you sand it and then you can stain it and then it's like it was never there but what I found and I got this trick from I forget who but you mix wood putty or wood glue with sawdust and you make your own wood putty and put it into the countersunk holes and it does stain and sand very well and I would say actually it is better than any wood putty that you buy and hey that saves you about five bucks right there all right let's get into the build all right, this is, uh, before we get into the build, this is an extra little component that I just wanted to put on my specific screen riser. You guys don't need to do this. This is an extra step, extra money. This came out to around uh, $6. This is a uh, metal mesh gutter guard protector for leaves. And this is a bag of uh, hammer-on staples that are black. Uh, this was about two bucks. This was $4.99. This is, uh, this is gonna serve the sole purpose of allowing things that are gonna be pushed into the two little, um, uh, little shells that I'm gonna have on this screen riser. This is gonna go in the back and to keep stuff from falling out the backside. Uh, so yeah, it's just a little extra step. Um, you can you can do it. Uh, you can choose to put it on or not. I will show you how to put it on, but this is up to preference and up to how much you really want to spend on this. All right, now we got everything ready. So I'm actually just doing this inside uh, since I'm not cutting anything. I'm just gonna do some light sanding and the only. Uh, tools I'm going to be operating are a drill and a driver, so I mean it's 
the worst is there's going to be a little mess on the floor I can clean up with the broom and the dustpan. Alright, so I am working on a little fold-out table since um, I don't have a workbench anymore. It's kind of somewhere where I can't reach it anymore. So if you have minimal, uh, you can have a, a minimal tool, minimal workspace, a uh, fold-out table should be perfect as long as whoever's table it is, they're fine with you using it. Alright, so for the uh, screws that I have, I picked out two drill bits. So what I picked out is a, um, what is this? A 330 seconds for a pilot hole for this number six screw. And then for the countersink is gonna be another screw because I didn't want to pick up a countersink bit because those by themselves are around 13 bucks. So you can honestly just use a bigger screw, a uh, bigger drill bit for the countersink bit. The only catch is I would recommend putting some tape, what like I'm gonna do in a second, to gauge how far you're gonna countersink your screw. And for the countersink bit, basically what I did, just line up the head to see if this is the exact width of the head, because this whole thing has to fit deeper into the wood than the, uh, than the, um, the surface is, because I'm actually gonna fill that in with the wood, putty, uh, wood glue and the wood shavings, and then sand it once it dries. All right, let's get into the building of this. All right, right here, I just kind of just dry fit them. They're actually not together at all. I just kind of balance them together. So this is what the end product should look like. What you're looking at right now is actually the bottom. That's why you see these oh, these lips right here. These are actually the feet. So you have clearance off of the ground from the bottom shelf. Um, what I'm going to do right now is get the measurements to drill the pilot holes in all the corresponding areas. So I'm going to have pilot holes two on each side. So one here, one down there, two right here, two on the top and two on the tops for the sides uh, right here as well. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, like 12 screws, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 total, I think. Uh, I'm really bad at counting. So yeah, let's get into it. Start sanding. You can see where it is. Hopefully, um, where the screw was. Hopefully, when I do um, stain it and stuff, it should hide it a little bit better. But uh, for right now, I'm just gonna sand it all down till it's flush, and then. Right now I have finished it and I'm going to sand it or uh, I'm going to stain it. So I had a leftover can of red mahogany uh, minwax stain. So this is going to be free for this project. However, if you are going to stain it, you're going to have to purchase stain. And uh, where I where I live, this is the smallest amount that you can get. Or there might actually be a smaller amount. So the the pint size might be better for you and cheaper. All right. And uh, for for. Um, for applying the stain, I just found an old t-shirt I had, cut it up, free of charge, it works perfectly.
All right, so it is finished. Uh, it's still a little bit um, damp in some places, but for the most part, it is dry all the way. It did come out really well. It um, The top piece with all the damaged um, uh, bits and pieces that I got from uh, using that uh, two-step, uh, two-bit step process, um, it kind of looks like an old pallet top now, which honestly I kind of like, but I know a lot of people are not going to like. Um, so hopefully if you do do this, you either don't countershake the screws at all, or if you do, just use an impact, go down and use actual wood putty. Or you get this old kind of repurposed pallet uh, wooden look, which honestly I wasn't going for, but I, I will accept it because that's kind of my aesthetic on my wall anyways. But if you're going for a more, much more cleaner look, just use an impact gun and uh, use um, just wood putty that you can buy because that will be a little bit more stronger than this stuff because they actually ended up kind of coming out when I was running the um, stain on it. But I do like how it actually turned out. Now it's finished and you can see right through it you got the two um, places to put little objects and stuff. However, I am going to put this on the back side which actually... Which side is the back side? I believe the side facing me will be the back side, yeah. So this side right here is going to be the back. So I'm going to cut this down to size and attach this with staples on here. It's just so that things kind of don't pop out the back side. I am going to use a pair of, uh, I think these are 18 gauge uh, tin snips. If you don't have one of these, uh, this will really help out. You can get away with uh, diagonal cutters, so uh, these are my uh, electrical diagonal cutters. It's going to be a lot harder, but you can still get through this uh, small uh, aluminum mesh with these, but this is a lifesaver right here. Alright, I'm going to speed up the process and put this all together and then you'll see the finished product. freaking camera battery is going to die so that sucks. Alright this is the finished product of the uh, monitor riser. I think it actually fits perfectly in with my aesthetic that I have going back here. There is one little thing that uh, a lot of people probably wouldn't like is the way that the uh, holes that I filled up with that uh, mixture of wood glue and wood and uh, wood shavings came out. It actually kind of looks like the top piece is a re uh, refurbished or reused wood pallet slot. Which honestly I kind of like because that kind of ties in with my uh, wood slats up here. But for people that want a more cleaner and better look, I would suggest to actually just uh, do what I said before. Just use the impact, drive the screws down maybe about a quarter of an inch into the wood and just buy the little $4 tub of uh, wood putty. Use that and sand it down. And when you, uh, when you cover it, it'll look a lot more cleaner than what I have here. But for my... Uh, for my um, setup it's honestly fine. The two cubbies are, I have right here are perfect for um, putting extra pieces. Yeah I had a lot of fun doing this and uh, hopefully you guys try this out and uh, uh, get, let me know if you guys uh, do do this send me some pictures I'd love to see what happens and uh, stay safe out there guys. Thank you for watching and uh, hopefully you come back and see another video of mine soon. Thank you.